Good morning. I'm Pastor Chris, and it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Yes, I have been running around in all sorts of directions, and I'm sure I forgot something. It's been one of those days. Um, uh, Dan and Roberta are not with us this morning. Um, usually Dan opens everything up, and I forgot to unlock the doors this morning. That's how good I was doing. So I'm glad we remembered that before you all got here. <laughs> But it's been kind of one of those days. And also, on another note, our computer's been acting up, and it wouldn't start. It finally got going. But if it shuts off, we got the books in the, in the, in the pews. We're going to go to those, just so you know, just giving you fair warning. <laughs> but with that, in all circumstances, we are gracious and joyous in the love of Jesus Christ. So let us open in a word of prayer. Almighty God, there is a chaos that, that surrounds us in so much of this world. We see news of, of devastation, of hurt. We see our lives running away from us, trying to pay bills, trying to get to work, trying to do all the things that we need to do. And Father, I ask that you would come among us this morning and still our hearts. Breathe your peace into us and remind us of all the good that we have in you. May our worship this morning be pleasing to you, and we ask that you would fill our hearts and fill our space. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and join, if you are able, in our call to worship, which is going to be from Psalm 66, 1 through 12, and it should be on the screen. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. Then we rejoiced in him who rules by his might forever whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip? For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into your net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let the people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. And I invite you, if you are able to remain standing, stand for our next hymn, hymn 139, Praise Ye the Lord Almighty.
please be seated. Even when we are faithless, Christ remains faithful. Trusting in grace, let us confess our sins together. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We keep our distance from you, for we are broken and sick with sin. Yet you see us and cleanse us and make us whole. Forgive us when we forget to return to you. Have mercy when we fail to praise your name. And help us to exude the faith that makes us well. Amen. Hear the good news. Your call has been answered. Christ has healed you and forgives your sins. With glad hearts, return praise to God. Let us pray. Past and present and future God, creator, sustainer, redeemer, help us to remember, help us to remember home and to hope in a promised land that we might know you. Alpha and Omega, three and one, amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Jeremiah, 29, verse one and four through seven. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. And our epistle reading today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8-15. through 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. And our next hymn is number 89 in the hymnals, or on the screens, as long as they continue to work. Uh, joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
please be seated. Let's bow our heads in prayer. These are your words, O God. Humble us to speak their weight. Strengthen us to hear their truth. Unbind us to live their call. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, for the sake of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 17, 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? None of, was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of God for the people of God. Would you say that you have an attitude of gratitude? I don't know about you, but it seems like this world is getting angrier and angrier. We are in such a rush all the time. I experienced it this morning. And we usually miss all that we have to truly be thankful for. All four of our scripture lessons today offer us a lesson in gratitude. Last week we read some laments, if you remember, that were found in the readings. And this week, even though the circumstances may still be difficult, we see a joy present, even in those hardships. Our passage from Jeremiah follows the lament that we read last week. And if you remember, the Babylonians had just destroyed the city of Jerusalem and carried away the people as exiles. The lament wished that the captors would pay for their deeds. But today, God says to the people, even though your lives have changed, keep going. Get married have families, build homes, and do all the good you can for the city you now live in. Be a blessing to those around you, even in your difficulties. It was kind of like a pep talk. So, funny story from yesterday. Emily has been working really hard to ride her bike. When she was younger, she had fallen a couple times on her bike and decided that I don't want anything to do with this. Well, now she's got it in her head again that I want to ride a bike. Bought her a bike a couple years ago, some of you may remember, and she's been practicing little by little, then she gets frustrated and goes away for a little while, and then she gets determined again that I'm going to ride this bike. Well, she's in that determined phase again right now, and she's getting so close. Oh, my goodness. We were out in front of the church yesterday, riding back and forth on the sidewalk, and she'd kind of get going. She's She's just trying to put it all together now. She has some balance, and then she gets the feet going, and it gets a little wobbly, and you put the feet down, and gets a, a couple of pedals and stops. And as she's doing this, and the frustration keeps building, we start to hear something. Someone is yelling. And, I mean, it just gets louder and louder. And as we look, there's somebody hanging out the passenger window of their car, coming down Smith Street, yelling, you know, keep going! You got this. You're doing awesome. You're doing so great. Just keep going. And I mean, all the way to, I mean, until you couldn't hear him anymore. I looked at Emily and we just both laughed. It was, it was like, we have no idea who this was, but she saw her trying to do this bike and she was just all the way down until she was gone. Emily and I, we just looked at laughing. We practiced some more. We tried, but I had no idea it was what she really needed. I would love to tell you that she figured it out, she rode her bike, but we're, st we're still working. But that pep talk helped her get past those frustrations. She was able to look at the good things, the things that she's getting better at, and just keep going. God's people needed a bit of a pep talk. To be reminded to be grateful, even in the midst of the difficulties we're facing, the exiles. Sometimes in our lives today, we need a bit of a pep talk. 
If I ever need to drive down past your house, just yell and keep going, let me know. Our psalm today, though, takes us on a, a bit of a journey as well. It starts with, make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. And it tells us to remember to say to God, how awesome are your deeds. It then reminds the people of what God has done for them. Remember how God rescued us from the land of Egypt. Remember how God parted the seas to free us. Then it turns to the struggles they're facing at that very moment. You've brought us into the net. You've laid burdens on our back. You've let people ride over our heads. But then it says, yet you have brought us out into a spacious place. Essentially, God, you are so great, greater than any challenge we are facing. We remember all that you have done, and we know that you will do it again. There are times when I look at the circumstances I face, and I'm tempted to become frustrated. I don't know where Emily gets it from, but... <laughs> but just like the psalmist, I have seen God act in so many amazing ways in my life. No matter what I'm going through, I know that God can and will provide. And it's not always easy to give thanks in all circumstances, but when I look at how big God is, instead of focusing on how big my problems are, I can't help but trust in the goodness of God. The epistle letter today was written to Timothy from the Apostle Paul, and Paul faced many difficult days as he sought to share the good news of Christ. He had been persecuted, beaten, thrown into jail on numerous occasions. And through all of this, he chose to continue praising God. Paul says that even though he is in chains, the word of God is not. God is bigger than any of his struggles. And he will continue to show gratitude and joy in everything. And our fourth reading today was from the gospel. It's one of my favorites. I, I've always loved this story. And there's so many aspects you can take in this story. Jesus had made himself a name as a great healer. People knew who Jesus was from what he had done. And people started to seek him out when they were ill or when they were in need. So as Jesus and his disciples are walking by, ten men shout from a distance. They had been isolated, cast out of society because of their leprosy a highly contagious skin disease. And in their culture, if someone showed any signs of a skin ailment, they were sent away. If the sores eventually went away, they could come back and they could show themselves to the priest. And if the priest agreed that they were cured, they could be ritually purified and returned to society. In many cases, though, being sent away did not offer much hope for return. These men had heard about Jesus, and they knew he was probably their only hope. And notice the faith that they show as Jesus tells them to go to the priest. They had not been healed yet. When Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest, they turned and went, and along the way, the healing occurred. One of the men, realizing this, stops after seeing the miracle that has happened, he heads back to Jesus and he shows him the gratitude. In all of these stories, we see differing levels of God acting in the lives of people. Some were cured. Some were still in chains. Some were exiled in foreign lands. But no matter the circumstances faced, we learn that we can be grateful because our God is bigger than any of our greatest obstacles. In the fall of 2000, former megachurch pastor Ed Dobson was diagnosed with ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. It's a degenerative disease that has no known cure or cause. And in 2012, Dobson shared his ongoing struggle to give thanks while living with this incurable condition. He writes, there are so many things for which I am not grateful. I can no longer button the buttons on my shirt I can no longer put on a heavy jacket. I can no longer raise my right hand above my head. I can no longer write. 
I can no longer eat with my right hand. I eat with my left hand, and now even that is becoming a challenge. And over time, all of these challenges will get worse and worse. So what in the world do I have to be grateful for? So much. He continues by saying, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord, thank you that I can turn over in my bed. Lord, thank you that I can still get out of bed. Lord, thank you that I can walk to the bathroom. Lord, thank you that I can still brush my teeth. Lord, thank you that I can still eat breakfast. Lord, thank you that I can still dress myself. Lord, thank you that I can still drive my car. Lord, thank you that I can still walk. Lord, thank you that I can still talk. And his list goes on and on. He says, I have learned with my journey with ALS to focus on what I can do and not on what I can't do. I have learned to be grateful for the small things in my life and for the many things I can still do. We faced a, a difficult few years, haven't we? And unfortunately, I believe the years to come aren't going to be much better initially. And this is not meant to discourage you, but just a recognition of the realities of where we are. We don't always have a choice when it comes to the struggles that we're going to face, but we can choose how we will respond. Through the faith we have in Jesus Christ, we can always respond with grateful hearts. As we trust in the power of God, we can overcome any obstacles that come our way. Our God is bigger than anything we potentially can face. Go forward with grateful hearts. Amen. Our hem of response is found on 2036 of the green books. I'm going to keep pointing that, or the black books, black books, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep pointing it out because if I do that, the screen's going to keep working. So, <laughs> so 2036 of the black book, or it will be on the screens. Please be seated. Let us enter together into a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do give thanks and we praise you. Even in the midst of trying circumstances, we know that you are bigger than anything we face. You are the God who can move mountains, the God who is created from nothing the God who can heal. We thank you. We ask that you would remind us in these difficult times, whatever we may be facing, that you are with us, that you walk alongside us. We all walk different roads, some more difficult than others, but there is nothing that you have not experienced, that you cannot walk alongside us. Remind us of your presence. And as we give thanks to you, 
remind us of how we can be a blessing for those around us. Just as you reminded your people to be a blessing to the city they were exiled in, may we be a blessing to those around us. May we show the love of Jesus in everything we do. As we give back what little we have or what you have abundantly blessed us with. Make us your hands and feet in this world that people may know you. Lord, we do ask for healing for those in need. We take some time to silently lift those before you who need your healing or to call out their names. We know that you hear all the struggles we have in life, all the pains, even those that are not spoken. And we ask that you would, that you would step in. We ask that you would heal. And in times of struggle, let us not forget the joys. Let us not turn to only seeing the the difficulties in life, but let us reflect on the joys, the laughter, the times where we can look at our children or our grandchildren, the times where we see your goodness in this world. Because in the midst of everything, we know that you are good and all of your creation is good. And we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. We thank you for not turning your backs on us as we turn our backs on you. We thank you that when we rebelled, that you came. We thank you that Jesus came down from on high to live among us, to become one of us. And then we thank you for the cross, the, the punishment that we each deserve, but you took upon yourself. It is through this that we are redeemed. It is through this that we have hope, and it is through this that we can be joyous in all circumstances because we know no matter where this life takes us, you have paved the way for us to be reunited with you. continue to work within us, continue to sanctify us and make us into who you want us to be. That we can share this news of hope with a world that desperately, desperately needs it. We lift all of this to you in the prayer that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> come to the time of our service where we dedicate our offering.
Um, we're still not passing a, a collection plate, but we do have offering plates by the door if you have brought an offering to share this morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you are. We thank you for all that you give us. And we ask that as we give back to you a portion this morning, that you would take these gifts, that you would bless them and multiply them, and give us wisdom as we, the church, seek to use them to glorify your name. We know that you will continue to provide in every circumstance, and we praise you. Amen. Our next hymn can be found on page 102. It's Now Thank We All Our God. Please be seated. I do have a few announcements I'd like to share with you. Um, first of all, following service today, we have our normal coffee hour. We invite you to come downstairs in the fellowship hall, and we have coffee and some treats. Um, I saw them carrying in some things earlier, and they look pretty good. So um, please go down so I don't eat them all. I don't need that. Um, following our coffee hour time, we do have our church council meeting, our quarterly council meeting. All are invited to stay for that. Um, I don't anticipate being a real long meeting today, but we're going to go through a, a few things we need to cover before our, our uh, church conference coming up here in a few weeks, which I'll cover that here in a minute. Uh, this Wednesday is our meeting marathon, meeting madness, wacky Wednesdays, and I've heard a, a lot of different names, and I've been assured that the wacky Wednesdays is not because of the people who are here. It's just a busy, busy day. Um, we have our, our meetings, our finance meeting, our SPRC meeting, um, and then uh, Women's Christian Fellowship at uh, 1130, I believe, there starts. So um, we invite you to come on Wednesday if you want to be a part of any of our meetings. Um, church conference is coming up uh, less than two weeks from now on Friday, and I have an exciting announcement about church conference. The last two years um, have been uh, different, haven't they? We've had to do everything through Zoom and all those fun things. We have been asked to continue doing them through Zoom, um, which makes sense with 
especially the district superintendent who has, I believe, 79 churches he covers in a short time frame. Um, hopefully there aren't any more outbreaks of COVID, but the last thing you want is the pastor, the district superintendent going to all these different churches and then going to all these different churches, possibly spreading something. But I did reach out to him and he is going to allow us to do a hybrid conference this year, um, which means we can meet in person if we would like and he will join us through a Zoom link. You are also w able to join us through Zoom if you are unable to attend in person. I will get the information to you on how to do that. But Friday, October 21st, I invite you to join us um, at seven o'clock, 6.15 for those on SPRC, but seven o'clock for everyone else. And we get to go through the, the business of the church and uh, get all that clarified for the year. So please join us. A um, Couple other things that Saturday after that is Halloween in the Knack. We have a game planned we're working on. Um, hopefully it's gonna all come together as we're hoping, but we're gonna hand out candy to the kids across the way after they go through our, our putt putt golf game that we're hoping to, to have done. And then the following week on Monday on Halloween, we have our Holy Hallways. Um, some of you have been a part of that for years. Uh, some of you don't even know what it is, but we dress in, in biblical characters and people come through the, the building um, kind of trick-or-treating in a sense. Um, the little clicker I had last year had 507 people come through the building. Um, I'm sure that it, I didn't get that count 100% accurate because they were coming through in such waves sometimes that it was just kind of a, I think that's about 20. <laughs> but it was a really nice experience, um, really good opportunity to, to be a part of the community. So if you want to be a part of that, if you want to dress up and be a part, if you want to park your car outside and do trunk and treat, trunk or treat, you can. There's many ways to be involved. So we will get, again, more information for you on that. And then um, we'll have more information coming up for our Christmas Bazaar in November too. Um, but if you know someone wants to rent a table or be a part of that, um, talk to Carol and get a head start on your Christmas shopping as it says in the, the bulletin. Never too early to think of that, huh? So um, community dinners have started again at First Lutheran Church, third Wednesdays. So um, those are great to support. And we are collecting new and gently used blankets um, for distribution to homeless or low-income families um, by social workers um, of Wellspring. So if you have anything you'd like to donate, we have a basket down in our fellowship hall you can bring. Um, Karen will, will distribute those to, the, uh, to Wellspring Ministries. Um, this is separate from the blanket donation we do for the first responders as well. We'll have that coming out in, in November as well. So I believe that's all the announcements. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah, yes, Th thank you. Um, so next Sunday, following service, um, I had shared that Mary and Tylee passed away uh, a few weeks ago. Um, Susan is looking to do something here at the church. Um, doesn't want it to be necessarily a formal memorial service, but a time we can gather, um, remember um, Mary Ann and, and Arden, who, who were both uh, instrumental in this church for many years. Um, so next Sunday's coffee hour will be kind of a special coffee hour um, for for the family there. So I invite you to, to come and, and be a part of that. Um, if you, and I don't have a lot of details on that. We're still kind of working out, but it's going to be something special for, for them. So and I believe that's all the announcements. <laughs> I'm getting some head nods. Yes, no. So with that, let me offer the, the benediction, and then we'll do our benediction head, and we can head downstairs. Go forward with joy in your hearts, a joy that can only be known through knowing Jesus Christ. And seek to spread that joy to all you come in contact with, that they too may one day know the love and hope available through our Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
God bless. Have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you downstairs.